Hello everybody, this is Gerber Gar and welcome back to another episode of Stardew Valley. So for the purpose of today's video, we are going to talk about fish ponds. We're going to talk about the kinds of fish you can put into the fish ponds and what you can actually get back. Now the majority of the fish in this game will give you back raw, but there's certain types of fish in this game that will give you back very strange and unique items if you put them into the fish pond. So let's start with the ginger island fish. We're going to start with the lion fish here. And you can get this in Ginger Island. So the lionfish can give you raw tarot tubers and timer slime, uh, uh, tiger slime eggs. Now a tiger slime egg is extremely rare, there's so only a 2% chance you will get that. The tarot tubers, there's about a 10 to 28% chance you get a few tarot tubers and the majority of the time you'll just get lionfish raw. The second fish we're going to talk about here is the blue discus. Now the blue discus can give you bananas, golden coconuts and raw. Now bananas only have a, about a 7 to 16 percent chance to pop up you just get one banana and you can also get golden coconuts but they're they're only a five percent chance so the majority of the time you will just get regular raw from the blue discuses and the last fish we're going to talk about here is the stingray which you can also get in ginger island but you have to get into the pirate's cove to fish this one up now the stingray can give you raw just like every other fish it can give you a magma cap which is very nice consumable to have it does give you quite a lot of energy and health it can also give you a battery pack and a dragon tooth. Dragon tooth is an item that you can pick up in the Ginger Island Volcano Cave. Now the dragon tooth is very rare, it's only a 5% chance that will spawn for you. The magma cap is also very rare with a 5% chance. So moving back to the regular game, we're going to start with the lava eel, one of the tougher catches in the game. It's a very difficult catch actually. I had to use a, a seafoam pudding and a trap bobber to get this fella put up quite a fight. The lava, eel, the lava eel can drop lava eel raw which is one of the best profitable rows in the game. It can also give you gold ore, spicy eels which is an amazing consumable. And it can also give you magma geodes. Now it's, it's worth noting here the spicy eels there's only a 4% chance you're going to get a spicy eel but when you do get them you can get 5 of them which is amazing because the spicy eel gives you a luck and a speed buff. Uh, especially if you're going to Skull Cavern, it's, it's quite the consumable to have. The gold ore is a 7 to 10% chance, and you can get between 5 and 10 magma geodes also from the lava eel pool, which is a 2 to 5% chance. So that is the lava eel. I just caught it there, I put up quite the fight, but it's definitely worth it. So the next fish we're going to talk about here is the ghost fish, uh, and it's a very common fish that you can fish up in the regular mines. You can get it on floor 20 and also floor 60. So the ghost fish gives you ghost fish raw, it gives you quartz, white algae, refined quartz and pale broth. Now the pale broth is extremely rare, 1.9%. So the next fish we're going to talk about today is the ice pip, which you can also get from floor 60 in the regular mines. Now the ice pip is, is it's a difficult fish to catch, not too difficult, but it does put up a bit of a challenge. It can give you raw iron ore, frozen geodes, frozen tears, it can also give you a diamond. Now the chances of it giving you a diamond is only 0.8% and like all of the lucrative items in Stardew Valley you need a maxed out fishing pond to get the end game items like that. And last but not least we're going to talk about the stonefish. And the stonefish is very similar to the ice pip where it gives raw copper or geodes stone and also a chance at a diamond. It's an 0.8% chance but it's still, still a chance. So moving on, we are going to talk about the Slime Jack, which you can get from the Source Cave. Now to get into this cave, you have to start a quest um, that's given that's given to you via the Wizard. When you get into this cave, you can fish up the Slime Jack. So the Slime Jack obviously gives raw gre green algae slime and a green slime egg. Now the green slime egg is only a 2% chance, but it can actually give between 10 and 50 slime and there's quite a big chance you can get that, there's a 34% chance you can get that. Next up is the Void Salmon, which you can get inside the Witch's Cave here. And the Void Salmon gives raw, it can give between 5 and 10 Void Essence, and when the fish is fully maxed out in the fishing pond, it can give a Void Egg. Now the Void Egg is only a 5% chance, but it's, it's still nice that there's a chance to actually get something like that. Void eggs can be converted into void mayonnaise, and it does sell for quite a bit actually. Uh, it's also worth noting that, I'm actually just going to throw this in while I'm in here. When you're inside this cave, you're going to notice a goblin here, and he won't move unless you give him a void mayonnaise. You can actually fish up a void mayonnaise here. Now you can only get it once, you can't fish that up anymore. Once you fish that up, that's it. 
but just so you know if you do want to get you know access to the shrines that the cave has to offer and you don't want to go back to the farm and having to raise chickens etc there's a very handy void like you or void mayonnaise you can get there in the cave so now we're going to move on to the Christmas fish, as I like to call them. So these fish can only be got in the mini game here when the night market opens up. The first fish we're going to talk about is the spook fish. Now the spook fish can give roll like all the other fish, but it can also give a treasure chest when it's maxed out. Now the treasure chest is at 0.3% chance it is incredibly rare, but a treasure chest can sell for you can sell for five thousand gold. You know, it's, it can sell for an absolute crazy amount of money. The next fish we're going to talk about here now is the octopus. Now, I didn't actually know you could get an octopus from this mini game. I thought you were going to get the octopuses in summer. But you can actually get one here. And the octopus will give raw and it will give omni geodes. Now, it can give between 1 and 10 omni geodes, and there's a 17% chance it can actually give those. And omni geodes are actually a very nice item to have because you can get all sorts of great things from omni geodes. You know, even prismatic shards and iridium ores, you know? So, that is the octopus. Octopus, in my opinion, is one of the hardest fish to catch in the game. It is incredibly hard. It's up there with the lava eel. It's, you know, it's... In my opinion, it's as hard as a legendary fish. But that's just, hey, that's just my opinion. <laughs> so the next fish we are going to talk about now is the... The Midnight Squid. Now, the Midnight Squid um, just gives squid ink. But it gives between one and two squid ink. Uh, where the regular squid just gives one squid ink. Um, so that's that's the only difference between the two, between the two squids. The regular squid gives one squid ink, the midnight squid gives between one and two squid ink. And last but certainly not least, we have the blobfish. Now, the blobfish can give raw, it can also give a pearl, but only a 2% chance. It can also give five warp totems back to the farm, but it's also only a 2% chance. Pearl is an item that is universally loved in Stardew Valley, so it's a great way to, you know, if you want to build up relationships. So another fish we're going to talk about here now is the, it's just a regular squid. And I'm just going to catch it here, because I, I didn't manage to get it in the, in the mini game. I don't know if you can get it in the fishing mini game actually. Leave a comment below and let me know if you can get that in the regular fishing mini game in the night market. So there's our regular squid. It's not as good as the midnight squid, but look, it's a squid. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the super cucumber now the super cucumber can be a difficult enough catch but it's worth it it gives raw it gives iridium ore and it gives amethysts now there's only a five percent chance it'll give you between one and three iridium ores only a five percent chance it'll give between one and three amethysts uh, but it is nice to get the iridium ore you know and now we're going to go to the desert and we are going to talk about the it's not the sandfish it's the other one the much harder one to catch Oh gee, what's it called? The scorpion carp. <laughs> now, the scorpion carp gives raw, but it also gives cactus seeds. Now it gives between two and five cactus seeds, but there's only a five percent chance it will give those. Cactus seeds can be grown indoors, um, so you need those. Uh, you need that indoor garden pot, which you get off Evelyn, the granny, once you complete the community center. So, pro tip: if you are planning on growing cactus seeds, they're actually a great consumer for health and energy. Try to get your hands on that re that retaining soil. So you don't have to water the crops all the time because you can't put sprinklers inside uh, inside your house, unfortunately. <laughs> Another fish we're going to talk about here is the wood skip. Now the wood skip can give regular wood. And it's a very high chance it's just going to give regular wood. But it can also give hardwood, acorns, maple seeds and pine cones. So it's a great fish to get your hands on all of those kind of items, you know, especially if you want to make resins and stuff like that. If you want to grow trees. Now hardwood is only between kind of 8 and 10%. But it can give five hardwood, which is really nice. And the next fish we're going to talk about here now is the Dorado. Dorado gives raw, and it can also give bug meat. Now, the bug meat is only a 5% chance, but it can give 20 bug meat. And that's nice. Fish we need to make bait, you know, for your fishing rod. So that is the Dorado. And last but not least, we have the Rainbow Trout. Now, the rainbow trout gives raw a rainbow shell, but it can also give a prismatic shard. Now, the the odds of you getting the prismatic shard is not 0.1%. I mean, you, you could fill up your farm with these things and you mightn't see one prismatic shard for a very long time. 
So we're back in the farm here now, and I'm just going to get all this lovely raw that the fish has produced. Uh, most of it is raw, but as we can see, we just got a frozen geode there, and we got some slime. You're always going to get squidding from the squids. Uh, get more raw there from the blobs, and more raw from the white salmon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell this raw, and I'm just going to show you how much you're going to get from selling this raw. Now, all these items are counted as forageables, they're not counted as fishing items. So you can't, you know, you can't increase the value of these, unfortunately, through your fishing perk. You also can't get the benefits of the, you know, double foraging or iridium star foraging items, uh, for some strange reason. Even though raw does come up as a forageable, um, you just don't get the benefits from the foraging skill. Let's open up the sub menu here now for foraging, let's have a look at what we got. So as we can see, some of the row isn't worth that much, but there's other pieces that are worth quite a bit. Wood skip row is only worth 67 gold, it's very little. Um, let's see, a more the super cucumber is coming in at 155, that's more than double the price of the wood skip row. The lava eel row get, takes first place all the time, 380 gold for lava eel row. And the ice pip and the blobfish then get a close second place with 280 gold apiece. The other fish... The raw that they generate, it's it's not worth it's not worth that much. But in all fairness to the other fish, they can generate secondary items, unique items that make them worth putting into the fishing pond. So I've also put some raw here into the preserve bin. So we're going to get back aged raw, and I'm also going to sell this aged raw just to see how much we're going to get. So obviously, it's going to be worth more than the actual raw itself because it's went through a you know it's went through a further process. So I'm just going to throw all this into the shipping bin now, we'll go to Steam and we'll see what we're going to get for this. So I suppose the big question is, if you filled up your farm with fishing ponds, would you make huge profits? You wouldn't. There's much better things you can put in your farm, like sheds, you know, f you know, fill the shed up with, you know, tr oil machines to make truffle oil, you know, fill it up with mayonnaise machines to make mayonnaise, fill it up with crystallariums to make diamonds or jades, you know. Um, but you should absolutely have a few fishing ponds in the farm just just to kind of you know have a chance to get a few items so as we can see here the uh the aged row comes in a lot more than the regular row before it's processed some of it even doubles in price especially the lava eel row there but lava eel row i think it takes it takes a good few days to get lava eel row i think it's five days so i would say in my own experience the fishing ponds they're nice to have, but don't fill your farm up with them. You're not going to make the profits you think you'll make. So I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll upload the next Stardew Valley video in the next day or two, as per usual. So stay tuned for that. And as always, folks, I hope you have a nice day. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future videos. And as always, have a great day.